Hello friends, Coach Bob with you today. And today, have you ever felt like you're just kind of pushing your luck? You know, man, I'm getting ready to go somewhere and everything's going really well. I think I'll add something else and that way I can see if uh, I'm making a mistake or not. Um, that's kind of where I am. We have the spider ready to go. We've got our highway pegs installed. We've got our monster stuff installed. We've got our Can-Am spider accessories, uh, floorboard risers installed, our BRP backrests, um, our uh, Can-Am spider accessories, uh, USB port. We even added the, the, the bling on the front uh, also from Can-Am Spider Accessories. I mean, we're knocking it out, man. We're doing stuff, we're busy, we're getting things ready to go on this trip. By the way, those little spider grills uh, went for a big ride. I'm looking for a knife. Uh, went for a big ride the other day, and that ride, we didn't have a bunch of junk inside those grills, so that did work. So the grills are more than bling for me. They actually make that, that access hole cleaner. There weren't a bunch of uh, leaves and, and, and bugs and stuff in there, and it was much easier to clean them off of that grill that was out towards the front. So there is some function in that fashion, so uh, I really do recommend those after after seeing that. The only thing I'm still kind of up in the air about is uh, this uh, This is made by Ram. Uh, I bought it uh, through Le Monster, but they don't make it. Um, this little self-leveling cup holder. I'm not sure about it yet. Uh, it seems that it's uh, a little odd with different cup sizes. It doesn't seem to work with uh, some of the cups that I want to use. No fault of theirs. I'm also not sure about the mounting location. Mess with that a little bit, but this is this is where it's gonna be for the short term for the trip. Uh, this uh, the phone holder seems to be working very, very well. Uh, I'm gonna create some sort of uh, redundancy where I strap my phone down. I'll show you my little fix for that in another video. And just to keep my phone from flying off if, if something did happen. Uh, the USB port is working magnificently. Uh, it's, it, it's one of those things where I've got a longer cord. I can run back there for Coach Vic to charge her phone, that sort of thing. So everything's going really, really well. So I figure being I've got everything working well, I might as well throw caution to the wind and mess it up. So you're probably thinking, well, how can you mess something up? Well, you know, sometimes you can uh, maybe go a little too far. It says not to use a razor knife on this box. You can cut what's in it. Now, I ordered this through uh, Can-Am Spider Accessories. This is not a CASA, CASA, I'll call them CASA. Um, this is not one of their products. This is made by, I think, Showchrome. Uh, you'll be familiar with it big bike parts, that sort of thing. Um, anyway, so they, you know, they, they shipped it from their place, but I ordered it through uh, CASA, can't have spider accessories. And it got here pretty quickly, not a problem. But what this is, this is the um, driver backrest. I don't want Coach Vic to be the only one comfortable. So it says, and it must be true, it says it's great looking. Okay, and the backrest easily removes when not in use. If that means that I can pop this thing out, that would be wonderful. I've actually talked to a few people that have this. Um, mixed reviews on this thing. Um, that Some say it's kind of clunky and jangly, some say it's wonderful. So, uh, I hope that in, in all of the installations I've seen on this have been mainly through manufacturer's pages. So what I want to do is give you some real world stuff. How hard is this for a novice to install? What does it look like? And is this something that I can actually quickly detach uh, for Coach Vic when I put her on and off of the Can-Am? She's got a little pouch. She likes that idea to hold her glasses in. Bago parts. This is the uh, piece I know that mounts to the bottom of the seat. Little parts page. Installation instruction. And if you're wondering, uh, this thing also tells you, you know, about cutting, cutting your seat. Always fun to do that. And always, always fun to drill holes and things, which we get to do both. 
We get to drill holes and cut our seat. Man, that's awesome. It appears that there are only 27 basic steps. So what I'll do is I will put a link in the installation instructions somewhere below this video, uh, like I did with my last install, and tells me what hardware is included. I will need a drill, okay? A serrated knife, tape measure, a hacksaw, a 5 sixteenths drill bit, a sharp knife, a 7 sixteenths inch wrench, and a pair of pliers, and a 10 millimeter wrench, and a 4 millimeter Allen wrench, and a 5 millimeter Allen wrench, and a 13 millimeter wrench, and an 8 inch Allen wrench, a 3 sixteenths inch Allen wrench, a fine point marker, a lint free cloth, rubbing alcohol, and a small flathead screwdriver. That is quite the smorgasbord of tools. Let's start getting things together. All right, so something I've never done. Always uh, get to do things the first time. By the way, uh, one of the Coach Bob 3 subscribers said that the uh, our Butt Buffer review is up on the Butt Buffer webpage. So that's pretty cool. Make sure you go over there if there's a place to leave a comment. Uh, let them know when you uh, saw the video and you went over there and bought your stuff uh, because of the video you saw here. Let them know, man. I appreciate it. It really helps the channel grow. Uh, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. Man, we're rapidly approaching a thousand subs and that's super cool. We may even be there by the time I post this video. First thing you have to do is we're going to have to take this seat off. Again, something I've never done. I do know how to lift the seat. If you have a seat heater, which I do not, uh, you'll have to unplug it. However, there is a plug there, so I'm going to have to unplug that. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. So basically, there's just a little plug right here. Not really a big deal. Um, so, got to unplug that. This gas strut I've got to remove. They say you need a flathead screwdriver to do that. There is a little clip in here that you have to put your screwdriver behind and press that clip out. And then I feel it. It's just hard to see it. There it is. There it goes. Pop right out. Beautiful. So once you get this clip removed, um, they say to just lower the seat. Uh, so, so that clip is removed. Let's get this thing off the top too and just pull it all the way off. Clip on each end and uh, doesn't look, it's not complicated. It's kind of clumsy. There we go. A little finagling. Now when you put this back on, just remember the, the shaft, the silver shaft goes at the bottom. Okay. There are two 10 millimeter bolts in here, right down here. Now, there is a, an access hole or a hole, there is a hole that you don't want to drop your bolts into. Now, what I've been told by everyone that I've read anything on, they've said take a rag, shove it down in here, that way if your bolts do fall in a hole or fall, they won't go down into that void. So what I'm going to do is get a very light colored rag so I can see a black bolt. So I've got my 10 millimeter. I've got a couple of extensions. I've got my wrench. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of these rags. I'm going to lay my tools on them. And I'm going to take this one. I'm going to shove it down in here. All right, so I see the bolts are pretty easy to see. Um, I've got the holes sealed up. It feels like everything else um, is pretty secure. Uh, I see the bolt right there. I don't know. I'm going to try it without the extension first and see, see what it looks like. And if the extension is needed, I'll use it. it looks like the extension is not necessary. It's a very short throw in here, so you know, um, a longer socket, I can get my hand on the socket and I can turn it. These type jobs like this right here, it's not, this is not difficult, it is clumsy. All right, when you put your finger on the back side of this thing, you can feel the nut on the other side. Um, I didn't really feel that on the other side. So I think that's what they're talking about. Try not to drop that nut, not the bolt. I heard that, that, that nut fall on the other side. I don't know. That should be it though. This side over here, there it goes. All right. That wasn't real difficult. There is a little hole right there. And I have, I see what I've got there. So be careful with that. 
Of course, when I did the other side, I realized there is another hole here. So I plugged it up as well. I don't know if it's plastic or if it's metal. I tried to use my magnetic piece. It didn't really grab it for whatever reason. So I assumed that it is plastic. Remember I told you whenever I drop things, I use this little piece here. So I'm going to span it out. And there it is. That's what they're saying you don't want to drop. A little plastic piece. I don't know if that's supposed to hold fast in the seat, but it did not. So um, I'm looking for the one on, oh, just did the same exact thing. <laughs> oh, I moved the rag and there it is. But that is a little catch hole, so I don't think you're gonna have a problem with that. I would venture to say that's what that is actually designed to do. It doesn't really go to anywhere. You can see it when you do this and not a problem to get out. The seat is now removed. So for the sake of visibility and air conditioning, I've uh, brought the seat inside. Um, I'll look at where I am going to have to drill my holes. So you're gonna wanna center this bracket. And once you get it centered, these two holes right here, you're gonna mark and you're gonna drill a couple of 5 16 inch holes. So let's get the 5 16 drill bit and my drill out and get ready to drill some holes. Big things you wanna be careful of. You don't wanna allow that drill bit to pull you through that plastic because if it does, guess what? You're gonna go through your seat and you're gonna have a hole in the material in your seat. To drill into some black plastic and I've often told you that my eyes don't do well with black on black and I have a hard time seeing that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take this tape and this will give me a surface that I can take that red china marker or grease pencil ones that I use on pretty much every installation that I do for multiple reasons. All right, gives me layers, it protects me, keeps the bit from walking, that sort of stuff. We talked about that in the inner installation. So now I will take this, I will center it. Um, there is not a scribe line. It'd be nice if they put a scribe line on this thing for the center of it. However, there are lines on this seat so you can, you can pretty much, I think you can get a very good idea looking at these, at these reference marks on the seat where these other holes are. Um, that is really in the way, and that's very distracting to the eye. Now I'll take my red marker, stick it in there, kind of go up and down and around. I'm gonna even do more than that. I'm gonna try to take the lead of this pencil as far out as I can on the hole all the way around. It says drill a 5 16th hole. There's a 5 16th hole. I will take that bit and I will verify that is a 5 16th. Before I drill something, I double check. In fact, I'm not only going to do that, I'm going to triple check and make sure. Remove the bottom mounting bracket. Drill holes using a 5 16th bit. What I like to do is as I do this, take my time and look and make sure I'm where I want to be, and I, and I am. One of the things I might suggest is uh, take a rag and kind of shove down that hole, keep little plastic shavings from going down in the seat. And through there. All right. We now have two giant holes drilled in our seat. Pull our plug out. Now being those holes are a little larger than this, um, I would think that we're fine either way. Um, they look good though, that looks good. All right, that was pretty scary, real scary. After the drilling is done, it says, go to the end of the instructions for 2014 and newer. What that means when it says 2014 and newer on the older ones, you have to cut that insert out. It appears using a flathead screwdriver, the plastic insert from the top of the seat, diagram seven, which is this, this should just pop out. So let's see if in fact it does. This is the piece they're talking about removing. Now they say we can do this on our newer models, 2014 and newer, with a screwdriver. So, let's see here. There's a little clip there on the front of this. Now, of course, I've never done this before, 
Um, there is, there are little flanges on the edge of this, uh, on the edge of this little insert. I'll show it to you when I get it out. Just be careful when you get it out. Um, take your time. See there are little flanges, and those flanges sit up under the edge of the seat. And this is what you have left, is this little area here. Now what it tells us to do is we are going to cut this piece here. We're going to go basically to the edge of this piece here, and cut there, cut there, and cut along that edge. Further ado, let's cut our $20,000 seat. <laughs> man, oh man, who ever thought? Now I am being, I'll say a little careful because a slip with a razor knife in this environment could be very, very devastating. So this is now what we have. I cut that center piece out, that's what we have is this has to be cut. And the reason this has to be cut is your backrest post is going to go up through this. And so what we have to do is we have to flip this thing upside down like this, and we're gonna put some marks on it. And when we put those marks on it, we will use these two tabs here as lines going in, and we will go 3 8 of an inch from here in. Now let me tell you, measuring three-eighths of an inch, that's pretty significant. I mean, they're not saying four-eighths, which is a half inch, they're saying three-eighths. So if they meant a half inch, they'd say a half inch. So we want to be as exact as we possibly can. Um, it's gonna be difficult to measure on that bottom side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my back line here and I will cut back and I will watch until I get to that line, and then I will cut across looking at the top. That's my, that's my goal. Now just to let you know, if you're a little paranoid, as I think most of us are at this point, this little piece here is going to go around your hole. So if you mess up a little bit, is it gonna give you, a, offer you a little bit of grace? Yes, it's going to. Um, we don't want to. We don't want to use that. We don't. We don't want to need any grace. So let's let's be real careful and get going on this. And hopefully, it'll be just as clean as a whistle. All right. So we have to measure three eighths of an inch from that peak. If you don't know how to read a tape measure, and there are those who don't read tape measures, they've never done it. They've never had a reason to. That line right there is an inch mark. Those halfway are the half inch mark. That's a quarter inch mark. So quarter inch would be how many eighths would be two eighths right so every two of these lines is an eighth so there is one eighth two eighths which would be a quarter three eighths would be there put our mark right there four eighths which would be a half there you go there's your coach bob map lesson for the day and there is our three eighths inch line right there now what i can do if i am unsure and the rule of the carpenter, measure twice, cut once, right? Looking at it, we are exactly one three eighths. But what we need to do now is take a hacksaw blade and we're gonna cut from this backside because you wanna go basically where those tabs start. We'll go straight back, straight back to there. I like looking at it from the top side because there's not a lot of lines on it that way and it makes it easier for me to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap a piece of tape around this thing so that I can see where the edge of that thing actually is. And because I already have the front side done, I can just draw my lines to the back. Now they say to use a hacksaw blade. Now I will tell you, the Coach Bob part of me wants to use a Dremel, but I'm not going to. Um, so I have to behave myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this line, like I said I was gonna do. I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna go like this. And you may go, Coach Bob, you're, cra you're crazy. What I've done, drawn a straight line up the sides and right there, and just connected to it. So now is the slow, arduous process of using a hacksaw blade. Seems to be cutting pretty good uh, I am going to turn this off. I'm going to cut a straight line, straight line. I'm going to turn this off for now because I don't think you want to see me for five minutes. The material is pretty soft. Now, I, did, I was using a brand new hacksaw blade, so it, it, 
but it didn't take, that didn't take three minutes. So we've got the uh, front to back done. Now they say to take a sharp razor knife as opposed to a dull razor knife. Sorry about the chair noise. <laughs> to cut this line here. The idea is to score and score and score. It should, you should be able to just fold this piece forward and it break right off. Now, I'm not gonna play with fire, obviously, because I don't wanna break it. Um, but let's just keep plugging away. There again, I will make you watch me go over back and forth with an eye. So I haven't been going very long and it's already starting to give way. It's material is pretty soft. There again, just be very patient. Uh, don't get in a hurry. It'll be there. It ain't going anywhere. And you know, better to take your time. If it takes you a minute longer to do something, uh, not a problem. Now, we have that cut. So they did not say to tape it. Like I said, I decided to tape it. I like protecting things. So let's see what our cut looks like. It should look better without the tape than it did with the tape and it looked pretty good with it. Just like that. Looks like it came that way, huh? Now I have to keep things clean because if not, Coach Vic will beat me about the head, neck, and shoulders. Now I will tell you, I know that she seems sweet and all that stuff. Have you seen arms on her? She will beat you over the head, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Nah, she's an angel, ladies and saints. So they show you a picture of the phone being cut out of that little area, basically the area that this hole would cover. And so the question is, what is the best way to cut the phone? I am assuming that they are gonna use like a bread knife or some sort of long serrated knife. Now I'm gonna tell you that this, my phone, has a huge void, right? And so it appears that all you have to do on mine is just simply cut this little center section and there is a hole all the way through already. Now yours may be different than that, I don't know. But that's all I had to do was just kind of, I trimmed the top with a razor knife and it opened right up. I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at. Right here, those holes, you can see there's a big giant gap right there, that void, that was there from BRP and I just cut that thin piece, that little piece right down the middle and my bracket should slide right down through there, and then I can bolt that in. They tell you if you cut your hole neat enough, you won't need that little, that little piece to cover the outer edge. Um, I'm going to try it without that piece first because I want to see how neatly I did it, and you can see the nice little hole that I've cut there. Looks pretty nice. Let's kind of do a sneak preview for just for us. This is the piece that's gonna go through there, so you can see it slides right through, not a problem. And looking at it, it looks like it was made for it. I don't need the piece. I don't need grace. I used it. I did it right. I need grace, just not this kind of grace. All right, just like you, you know, this is this is how I do it. I mean, you know, you're going to have to do the same thing. And you'll have this video as a reference, and, and that's great. But remember, always resort to looking at your instructions. Um, you got a lot of nuts and bolts and pieces and you want to make sure you use the right ones in the right places. I do not, I repeat, I do not have a clue where any of these things are going to go. I'm dividing them up into sizes, that's what I do. Um, lock washers, kind of move all those to the side. You see these are lock nuts, you see they've got the little plastic piece in there. That, that locks that nut down. These are standard flat washers, okay. A lock washer, the way you can tell a lock washer, lock washer has that little cutout on it. You can see it's, it's, it's not even. And that little groove is that metal. When you tighten it down, that metal digs in. It keeps it from vibrating loose. Therefore, you don't need Loctite that I'm gonna use. <laughs> We've got all of our pieces here, and that's wonderful. Um, mount the adjustment plate to the top removable mount. So we've got a top removable mount. Looking at the picture, this is the removable mount, okay? This right here, they say the adjustment plate. This is the adjustment plate. In the picture that they have, their adjustment plate has two holes in it. This one has three holes in it. Why does it have three holes in it? I don't know. Ask Showcron. <laughs> but I'm looking at it. The curve goes to the outside like that. The flat side goes to the bracket. At least that's what it's doing in the picture. And they say take 
M6 18 millimeter screws. It tells us to put a lock washer on first, then a flat washer. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and load two of these up, lock washer and a flat washer, into that plate right there. That's how that works, it threads into the plate. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that when I get this assembled, that I won't disassemble this again, because I very well may, and I may add lock tight to certain things and not to other things. I'm one that takes his time, and I am willing to put things together and take things apart four or five times to make sure that I have it exactly right. To the When I say right, I don't mean like show chrome or big bike parts says. I look at what I think is going to be a necessity for Coach Pick and me. Now you can see this adjustment plate there's a groove on this thing so that adjustment plate, you can move that up and down. I'm not gonna tighten that up until I know exactly what we're supposed to do with that adjustment plate. Attach the removable mount to the riser using the M814's diagram six. Diagram six, man, there are a lot of things going on. So when you look at diagram six, here's the exploded view of that. There's a lot going on there. So I am looking at it and I go, okay, that's easy enough. I have to figure out what's what, but it looks like I can put all of the seat part together. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm gonna get the backrest and am I going to sit here and go over a bunch of uh, directions? No, I'm not. I, I see how this works. There are two holes right there. You can see there's a very mild indentation. That's where those screws are going to go through. And those are going to be these smaller ones. This bracket right here, you line it up on these two holes. So the next thing we're gonna do is attach this bracket right here. This is our little backrest piece that we put in a minute ago. I didn't tie anything down. You've got these pieces here. Now the way this is going to work, two screws that will go through that are threaded. I gotta find the right ones for it. So these go in. And the way this works, when you put this on, what you're gonna notice is you've got, this hole is threaded on this. So you go, well, that's all I need to do is just, is just put that on there. And, and the truth is, that's not all you need to do. And there's a reason for that. This, for me, is the most critical element, I would say, for us. Um, because this is the part where you can remove this or not. So, on the back of this, they have what they call a jam nut. And that jam nut is there for a reason. It allows you to put as much tension or slack on the backrest as you want so that you can lift it out, right? And so what I have to do is set that up. And there's a little notch there, which I don't, I'm not sure that they really want you doing what I'm going to do. And from the way it feels as I am assembling this, I would say they really don't want you doing what I'm going to do. I want this backrest for me to be able to grab this and just pull it out. So what I'm going to have to do is a big no-no for you, but it's not a no-no for me. There's a little notch on the bottom of this, which disallows this bracket from sliding out. So let me explain to you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it this way. And I'm gonna loosen, loosen these up so you can see. With these loose, what I want to be able to do is lift this bracket off. Now, right now, I can't, and I'm gonna show you why. At the bottom of this piece, there are two little pieces there, and the, the two little notches there, and those notches disallow you from pulling that backrest off. Now, what I wanna do is be able to pull the backrest off. I wanna literally be able to, when I put Coach Vic on there, I want to literally be able to just take this thing and go, whoop, pull it right off. So what I'm going to do is those little tabs right there, I'm gonna dremel that off to where I can lift this seat completely out of the Can-Am. Now I'm gonna test fit this before I do. So let's keep assembling for the moment and uh, then we'll go from there. Like I said, these are just jam nuts. They hold things in place. Um, we're just gonna, what we're gonna do, we're gonna mock everything up and then I'm gonna do what I need to do. So we've got this piece done. Um, I'm gonna run this all the way up high because I'm tall. So we're gonna snug these on up. We got the adjustment plates on, we got this piece connected, a little lip goes out to the front. Uh, the jam nuts are holding on the back, that keeps those from coming loose. And that is where we are as of the moment. Next thing, not much to this. This is gonna go on here. That's gonna be your, uh, your pivot part of your seat. But this can't go on until 
this is on your seat, which uses these small, ever so small washers. Now, one of the things that I was telling you is there are a couple of little indentations in the seat, and they tell you that this is awkward. Um, I would say they are absolutely correct. This is awkward, and I don't understand why a manufacturer would not go ahead and punch those holes all the way through for you. Because this is like an inflatable needle, and it just gives me a little bit of something that I can just kind of punch right through. It's kind of started there. So now I can just do that. So let's put some lock washers on here. We don't want these things coming loose. I say the hardest part is just kind of fishing around and finding the holes in here. I think you're working your way through. There's a little bit of fabric in there. You could feel it. And you can see I'll press that down into the fabric. And I'm feeling around for the hole. Um, like I said, they say it's awkward in the uh, instructional sheet and in the video. Let's see if we can get the other one to start. Maybe if we get one to start, the other one will magically. I feel the hole in there. I can feel it with this. But it's just going to be one of patience. They do the uh, old cutaway in, uh, in the video. I may have to do the same thing because I may not be able to find the hole if I don't. So what I did is I pressed the back plate in like this with my thumb. And that gave me an opportunity well, to move that, that screw around. This one started. You see, though, the difficulty. You want to be careful not to let that thing slide and you don't want to cross thread it. Um, looks like this one's starting as well. How tight do you go? I don't know. This, um, I, what I'm doing is I'm flattening out those lock washers. That's all. So that plate is on. Not too terrible. Uh, it would be nice if they had a little pilot hole, but this worked perfectly. It's, it's sharp enough and yet dull enough that you're not going to damage anything. A lot better than the blunt head screw that was used. Now that we have that done, the next thing we're going to do is install this piece here. See, it's got a, a curb that sticks out. We're going to make that curb go to the front. And we're going to stick that screw through there. And these are the nylock, the little jam, the, not the jam nut, the lock, lock nuts that I was telling you about. Take those, get those started with your finger. Now, little things like this I, I do, and I don't know that it's really necessary. I'll take a piece of cloth or uh, paper, stick it up under there. And that way, if this wrench rubs, it rubs on the paper, not on the seat itself. Now, I want this not tight. We want to be able, the backrest to be able to move. But what we don't want, we don't want clangy, clangy, clangy. Now, once I get that on the motorcycle, if I want to snug that down a little more, I can. I'm going to go a quarter of a turn more. Let's see what that happens. Let's go a little more. Years ago, I was working on a Jeep and I spent three hours on a track bar because the axle was a quarter of an inch off. The guy at the local Jeep repair shop told me I was a lunatic. A quarter of an inch doesn't matter. It matters to me. You can see that that moves but it doesn't make noise. So next up, this piece right here, this bolts to this. I'm tall, so and I'm long-waisted as well, so I'm going to put this here. And because I don't really, this has a, this has a lock nut on it. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm going to put Loctite on this. I don't want this coming loose. So again, start with my finger. There we go, and there we go. This, if you were to go by the directions that they gave you, this would already be in the seat, okay? So you're going, Bob, why is yours not in the seat? You're not following the order, the, the proper sequence, and you're right, I'm not. There's a reason for that, and you, that will become readily apparent once we get all of this going. Um, the only, the remaining thing to do is to put this same type piece here that we put right there on this. That's all that's remaining. And that's gonna sit down in that, and you can see that, that angled piece. See so there's a notch right there? It sits down in that adjustment piece, and that allows you to determine how far back that backrest will go. If you raise that plate up, that piece will lean more forward. If you lower that plate down, 
that piece will go further backwards. We're, I want more vertical, so I'm gonna go further back. And you may or may not hear, Coach Vic is in there doing some editing. She got her YouTube channel going, let me tell you. So once again, we're at that place where you're going, Coach, you have all this put together and now you're gonna have to take it apart. Mm -hmm. And you are correct. You can see this is so you can flip this seat forward when you allow someone to get on it. Um, what I want to do is literally be able to just slide that out. So, but in order to slide that out, I have to set these jam nuts and grind that little bottom piece off there. And that is what I'm going to do so that I can just slide that out and slide it back in and slide it out, slide it back in when I put Coach Vic on and off. That's the plan. See, even with that loose, that will not slide off. That's unacceptable for me. I need to be able to slide that thing right out of there. And if I can't slide it out, this thing's useless to me. So what I am going to do is I'm cover this seat in a plastic bag. I'm gonna come down there and that little edge right there, that little notch right there, I'm gonna get a Dremel tool and I'm gonna take that little lip right there off. And then I should be able to slide the seat in and out and put Coach Vic on there just like that. So what I did, now I don't know how well you can see this, inside of this bracket here, there was a lip right there and that would disallow you from lifting the seat out. Now, as you know with me, I have to put Coach Vic on and off of this machine and I want to be able to just lift the whole seat out of there without having to screw and unscrew things. So what I've done is I've cut, I've ground all of that metal out. These are the screws that it will sit in and they have jam nuts so I can set them to a preset length. Now these screws can slide up and down through there whereas before they would not come out. So what I have to do now is this. I'll set these jam nuts to a preset length, okay? And then once I get them set where I want them, they'll stay in place. So what you do is you, you basically you run this screw through here now, I'm not telling you to do this. If you don't want to do this, don't do it. But for my needs, my wife's in a wheelchair and I'm not willing to rip the bottom end off of her bottom end in order to go along to get along, okay? I'm just not. And, and I don't care if, you know, a company said, hey man, you're not supposed to modify it like that. And be like, okay, well, you're right. Now, see you later, you know, that kind of thing. So. Uh, what is paramount to me is Coach Vic's safety, and I couldn't give two cahoots about the rest of it. So here we go. So this is going to be screwed into the seat. This will drop in from the top now and slide on there. Now, you can see it will slide on and off. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set these at a pressure. We'll have some friction. In other words, I want to have to press it on, and I want to have to yank it out. So, more like that, like that. So let me get the wrench, tighten these down, see if I can get these jam nuts set to the perfect length before I put this on the Can-Am. Never be afraid to think outside of the box and do what you need to do for the people you love. At this point, I'm getting ready to do a step that they said to do a long time ago. Now, for obvious reasons, I chose to do it a different way because of my circumstance with Coach Vic. They talk about how you can use a serrated edge to cut the foam all the way through. Now, I chose to just, you know, use the, the slot that was already there, and I did not do that because I didn't, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, although I'm gonna clean this up a tad using this. This piece here goes on the bottom. Let's take the sharp knife so we don't cut our seat. And this goes through the top. And down into the seat. Now, am I going? What I am going to do? Take this out as I do this, because I don't want it to be in my way as I work. And I can look and see inside of this thing, and I do see all the way through. So there really is not a thick pad all the way through. I will cut out what I need to do for the channel to drop that seat in and out of there, and I won't remove any more than I have to to do that. So the curve of this spoon and these two nuts, will, or two uh, button heads go to the front, okay? It's gonna go to the front, it's gonna drop down inside the seat. 
I'm looking right here. Um, I'm looking for, there are the holes right there. I see them. This is going to go here, and those two holes are going to screw in right there. So we get our holes lined up. I can take my hand, I can put it under the seat, and I can line these holes up. And I can see the threaded holes right there and slide that bracket and just work it back and forth until I find them. Now that metal bracket is inside the seat. And the idea is this thing works like a big spoon here that presses down and holds everything. How effective is it? I guess we'll know, won't we? Um, we'll know the first time I lean on it and if it feels terrible, I'll know I made a bad purchase. Um, if it feels great, then I know I made a superb purchase. So, but I've heard a lot of guys like this thing. I've heard a lot of guys complain about this thing. Um, the big complaint that I heard for the most part was from people who literally wanted to be able to pull the backrest out at times. And it was one where they had to get under it and take things apart and take bolts loose. I was not willing to do that. And I knew from the very beginning that I was not willing to do that. There, a little mojo here. I can take this, drop it in like that. And then when I get the take her off, I can pull her off the seat. All right. So now, I'm gonna put this in. All right, here's what I have. You can see I've got those two jam nuts right there. Take this, drop that around those two jam nuts, and there it is. They want you to be able to do that to get on and off the motorcycle. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that at all. I'm never going to do that, I can assure you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this vertical to give Coach Vic room. I'm going to move that adjuster plate up, and I'm locking that thing in place. So the first thing we need to do is this adjuster plate. This plate right here, that's what I was telling you earlier. Um, if it raises and lowers, that allows the backrest to go back to a certain amount and go forward to a certain amount. And so what we'll do, we'll take this, we'll slide this up. That looks vertical right there to me, and we are gonna lock it right there. This forward leaning option for an able-bodied person is wonderful for us, has no purpose other than for Coach Vic to get hurt on that right there. And I'm not willing to risk that. That's a big old piece of metal, y'all. That's a lot of stitches, that's what that is. Now it would be more stable if I were completely locked in down there. But is it any more stable than it would have been if this was adjustable? Absolutely not. So I can take this, I can just drop it in, and there it is. Let's put this thing back on the spider and see what it does. So what I've done, I've, I've got these rags in this hole here, that hole there, those were the holes I dropped the piece in earlier. Wasn't a problem fishing them out. I have a feeling the center hole won't be quite as forgiving. That's the one everybody talks about. These little areas right here, this is where that square, that, where, where that square nut goes in right there. There's a, there's a little trench there for it. So I'm gonna slide those in there and you gotta take the bolts out. So, but I'll slide the little square nuts in there and then we'll see if we can't get these bolts started and get this thing put back together and buttoned up. I'm gonna take a piece of masking tape. And once I get this assembled, I can reach in there and pull this out. I'll make sure I have enough to reach to grab. And I'm not taping the bolt. What I'm gonna do, the track that this slides in and out of, and I'm gonna put this in the track, just right there along the track. And all that's gonna do is keep that piece from being able to slide down that track. That's all. And then once I get the seat back on there, I'll reach my hand in there and just grab that little piece of tape. You've got these little metal inserts that your seat rotate on. They go in there. So you don't want to drop those either. And your seat will start to line up as you bring it back. And once they drop in, they drop right in. And I mean, you'll know they just slide without any resistance whatsoever. Now, to get these screws lined up, and I will tell you that those little square nuts um, want to move. They do want to move. Uh, I have that one started. I can feel it. And this one, I'm going to do the same. The little tape idea seems to be helping out quite a bit. Now, once you feel like you have this started, don't assume that it's right. Now, and what I mean by that, take the seat and move it. And if the uh, if you can see that it's through the hole over here and it's through the metal bracket, 
then you're good. Same thing over here. You'll see it's through the hole, through the metal bracket and the nut. Then you know you've got them all started. Now you can start tightening things down. So let's get those 10 millimeters up and get this thing started. Now once you get everything started and all that stuff, just be patient. These things take time. Uh, these are real difficult to get your hands in here. That's the problem with them, but not impossible. And what I'm using is just a, a deep uh, 10 millimeter socket, turning it with my fingers. So they're started, so it's locked down. So now the seat goes up. Notice we don't have our gas strut, remember? We took it out early. We're gonna pop it back in. Remember the, uh, the shiny part went to the bottom. So we're gonna pop the top in first. Should just click on there. Now let's see if we get this bottom one on. So now, what we'll do, take our rags out and hook our wire back up. All of our bolts are started. Nothing can fall now. Remember, slow is fast, fast is slow. Uh, hook the little cable back up. There she is, there's an access hole. We shove that stuff back right down in that access hole. And the reason I wanted to do all that, I wanna make sure that everything, before I go to tightening everything up, is lined up. That everything is either the right amount of distance back or the right amount of distance forward. Because it is important now that all of this line up properly. So once you get it straight and locked in place, Okay, so locked in. So now that I have it locked in, as I tighten it up, it should be where it needs to be. But if you tighten it up before you lock it in that place, in that mechanism up there, it is not going to be lined up, I assure you. Now this, like I said, was not on killer tight. So what I have to do is make sure I don't kill it. So let's see, let's lift this thing up. There we go, went up. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna drop this backrest on and see what it looks like. So we should just be able to slide this back a little bit. And just like that, she's in. Now, so, oh, wow. Yeah, I have, to, I have to adjust that back a little bit. That's a little far forward, but man, that feels great. I think I'm gonna also go down a little bit, but we'll play with the adjustment. Man, what a difference. It feels nice, doesn't feel jangly. This is, how it's installed. Not complicated, take your time, you're gonna make some cuts, you got a lot of that sort of stuff to do. If you want to make it a quick release like I did, uh, you're gonna have to do a little grinding and be willing to risk some certain, I guess, uh, liabilities. So I do not endorse this, I don't endorse you doing it, I endorse me doing it. So make sure you like this video, you share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, I greatly appreciate it. Leave a comment. The comments really mean a lot to us and it's helping the channel grow. We're ready for California. Uh huh. That's what we're ready for. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. Rain, oh no. I ordered a poncho. Let's see if it works. So we got the backrest on. It does work. The uh, quick off and quick on works pretty well like I had anticipated. So the real question is for Coach Vic. So Coach Vic, what do you think? Is it too tight uh, as far as the fit with you? Is Does it maybe limit your room or are you okay with it? Almost, you no, know, it feels snug, but it's not It's not messing with my body now. Okay. But it's actually comfortable now I can put my hands here. Does it make you feel more secure at all? Uh, yeah, hold on to it. So we've got Coach Vic's legs up now. So Coach Vic's legs aren't dangling now. She's got some nice arm rests and she's got the security of the seat cushion. So Coach Vic is surrounded 360 degrees, which I will say Coach Vic likes to do something that y'all may not know. What is that, Coach Vic? I like to sleep, I'm not gonna be sleeping. So okay. do you think it's possible in a 12 hour ride that you might doze off on the back of this? I have before and probably will, but I'll try not to. So do you think this makes it safer? Yeah, but I'll just... It's, it's still unsafe, but is that better? It, yeah, I'll be good, but I'm not guess. Okay. I'm not going anywhere. For me, I have the backrest. Uh, I have the highway pegs. Uh, I have the new monster cuff with the uh, phone holder, RAM cup holder, uh, with the uh, 
Can-Am Spider Accessories USB port and the Can-Am Spider Accessory foot risers for Coach Vic. So we got the BRP armrest, the BRP trailer hitch and harness with the Freedom trailer. So we also have the big bike parts. I think this is the Hoffnell brand uh, that I modified a little bit as you saw in the video just a minute ago. Uh, lights that we installed, uh, the spider drills. I think, I would say that we are ready for California. So again, go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams. Eat right. Eat right. I'll have me a cooler for the trip too. Take care of yourself. Yep, I'll take little breaks and take a little stroll too. And remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. And if you're not doing it right, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> but it's okay to do it wrong sometimes when you're not doing it right. Until next time, go seize the day. We'll see you soon.